Today we're going to be talking about the IQ Player. This was an obscure Nintendo console only released in China. The purpose of the IQ Player was to break into the Chinese gaming market, which for the longest time had a strict ban on video game consoles. As such, piracy was very high. Nintendo tried to combat this with the IQ Player released in 2003. The way this was accomplished was by making people go to kiosks known as IQ Depots to download the games. Originally, the IQ Player was being designed to play all of Nintendo's previous consoles from the NES, Super Nintendo, and the Nintendo 64. However, at some point in development, they decided to focus solely on the Nintendo 64. So on November 17, 2003, Nintendo, under the brand of IQ, released the IQ Player in mainland China. The controller you see is also the console. It's an all-in-one device. Additional accessories were the multiplayer box, which allowed for four players. They also sold multiplayer controllers separately. Those controllers were similar, but could not be used as individual consoles. Included with the console was the IQ card. This came preloaded with Dr. Mario 64, a smart choice in my opinion for a pack-in title. And obviously, this is the best-selling title. Alongside Dr. Mario 64, there were four other games at launch. Star Fox 64, Super Mario 64, Wave Race 64, and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Now I have to say, that's one hell of a lineup to start out with, especially at launch. Even though over here in the States we have the GameCube and we're playing games like Luigi's Mansion, Pikmin, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and many other classics. To the casual person in China, this is an amazing lineup to start out with. With Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64, they got two of the greatest N64 games right off the bat. But it wouldn't be long because that next month, they got Mario Kart 64. Nintendo continued to support the IQ player into the next year, with F-Zero X released in February of 2004. The next month, Yoshi's Story released. So far so good, and a few months later, Paper Mario released in June of 2004. Pretty impressive considering this is a wordy RPG. It definitely shows Nintendo's commitment to the Chinese market. However, it would be a few more months before they would see another game. In September, Sin and Punishment released. At the time, this had only been released in Japan, never receiving a worldwide release. China would get it on the IQ player three years before we would see it on the virtual console. Unfortunately, after a steady string of releases, it would be nearly an entire year before we would see another game. In June of 2005, Excitebike 64 released. And towards the end of that year, Super Smash Bros. released. Pretty crazy to think about in 2005, the original Smash Bros. was being released in China. It would again be another little wait until May of 2006 when Custom Robo released, which was quickly followed up the next month with Animal Crossing, also known as Animal Forest. And that's all the games that ever released on the IQ player. Now as an outsider looking in, I can definitely see why piracy would be pretty high in China. They didn't really have many other options. Nintendo definitely tried, and I have to admit these are some amazing games and quite a good lineup, but it still took a few years to get all these games out, and it's a very shallow library. But it must have sold pretty well because in 2009, Nintendo announced IQ at Home. This allowed people to download games from their computer at home. Remember, this is three years after the most recent game released. You'd probably be expecting another game release, but nothing ever happened. The system would just kind of exist for the next few years until October of 2016 when it was announced that IQ at Home would be discontinued that year and over time it would be eventually phased out until 2018. And that was pretty much it for the IQ player. There was one game that was announced that is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. It appears on the back of the box of the IQ player, but is the one game that they never did release. Pretty disappointing for all those Chinese Zelda fans. But I mean come on, they probably had already pirated it back in 2002 anyway. As for the IQ player, I have to say it's an interesting piece of history. Now I personally don't own one and I don't really have any intention to. At this point in time it's nothing more than a collector's item. But let me know what you think. Do you want an IQ player? Would you pay the ridiculous eBay prices to get one? If so, what would you do with it? Try and put some games on it or just look at it? Whatever it is, comment down below. Thank you for watching, give this video a like, subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.